that's true. Naked Palpatine. Um. <laughs> oh, oh, you think that one? Fresh out of the clone tank, nude Palpatine is my That's the first thing I think of when you say Dark Empire Palpatine. Hello, everybody. I need a weapon. Welcome back to the Halo Expand Universe. I just have two things for you. A novel and a little thing you can watch on YouTube right now. Um, Birth of a Spartan trailer was one of the trailers they made for the Halo Reach video game. Um, and basically, it is a Carter um, origin story. Uh, sort of, kind of, not really. It just basically shows him getting his uh, augmentation things. Um, Carter is the leader in Halo Reach that you follow because you play as Noble Six. But his name is Carter and he's, you know, the big leader dude. Um, and so we get to see a younger kid, you know, go into this surgery room and, and get stuff injected inside of him as he becomes a, a super soldier. And, and that's basically it. It's, it's a nice little um, trailer. Um, and you can watch on YouTube right now, so I recommend it. And up next, we have The Cold Protocol by Tobias S. Buckle. And guess what? Unlike most of my reviews, I actually have a physical copy to share with you. I like the artwork on it. It's pretty nice. This tries to tell a bit more of a, a nuanced story. There's a lot of insurrectionist stuff in here. There's stuff even with Thelvadom. And if you don't know who that is, that is the Arbiter from Halo 2. Uh, along with a lot of stuff with Jacob Keys, and we get introduced to another Spartan team, Grey Team. Uh, so all in all, it's a pretty decent novel. Um, still, I've not felt oomph from this franchise since... Um, the Forerunner Trilogy by Greg Bear, which of course was written during the 343 era because those were background stories written for uh, Halo 4, but they are really good sci-fi. And so far I've had a decent amount of time with all these Halo novels, but nothing has really grabbed me as of yet. They've all been pretty decent. This is another one that's decent. It's, I can't lie to you and say this is my favorite thing ever because it's not. There's a lot of lore here, a lot of backstory here. Definitely a prequel novel to read before playing the games. Like, if you didn't want to read every short story or read every comic like I've done or been doing, this book will give you pretty much all the, most of the backstory you need. You know, you get a little bit of the prophet scenario, you get a little bit of the Sanghealy. Not really any brute stuff, but we learn a bit more about the Kikyar and the Ungoy, the, the Jackals and the Grunts. Um, we get more of the insurrectionists. We get a main character named Delgado. Also interesting about this book, no racism here, just something I noticed, there's a lot of Latinos and Hispanics in the insurrectionist rebel area. Like Del Delgado is like Hispanic or Latino, and like half the people in the council are too, so it's just interesting that there are so many. I, I just, you know, people talk about representation. When was this written? Like two 2008? We had a whole bunch of representation in here. So, but I, I like Delgado as a new character. He's a, he's a pretty interesting guy. He starts from being pretty in the insurrectionist camp to being pretty pro-Navy by the end. Um, we have the Spartan Grey team, and they're a lot less, like, um you know, like John and everything, where they're, they're right in the thick of it. They, they, they kind of, I mean, they can do it, but they prefer being more stealthy, being, you know, getting around things more. And I like that about them. They're, they're an interesting team. Jacob Keys, you know, we, you know, he, we already know he's great because he's also in the Fall of Reach novel, which I haven't reviewed yet, but he gets a lot of good moments to shine in here, which just makes you appreciate him more considering the original, um, game is the last time we get to see him so a lot of good stuff with him um and a lot of good stuff with Thelvadom. you know i wasn't even expecting Thelvadom to be in this story but we get a lot of Thelvadom here which is great because you know he's gonna become such an important character in the main games so i thought it was great to get that with him here um 
And the Cole Protocol, of course, is the um, directive by Preston Cole to um, basically purge all data from your ships and any other thing you might need to if the Covenant board you, so that way they cannot find the location of Earth. Because that's the big thing that they're trying to prevent. The Earth and the inner colonies close by Earth, so that way they don't find that. So that's sort of the whole thing with the Cole Protocol. We've seen that in other places already if you've been following along with my reviews, but this is the big book that kind of talks about that. But overall, pretty decent book. Uh, the chapters are really short. Sometimes chapters are a single page. It's a very easy read, but it's also not particularly the most interesting either. I mean, there's a lot of interesting lore tidbits to kind of digest, but there's also just a lot of... Okay. Again, it's a good book. And it tries to be a little bit more nuanced, but at the end of the day, the UNSC are still the good guys. And they don't really do anything wrong. I mean, they, they do give the insurrection aside, but it's very... They're just ignorant. Oh, they're stupid. They think they can make an alliance with the Covenant. The Covenant are going to betray them. They're stupid. Like, yeah, they are. But, again, it's, it's very much one-sided. The, the problem with these early uh, Halo novels, which I've noticed when it comes to UNSC... And what they have done, um, it's a very uh, black and white conversation. Um, and we haven't reviewed The Fall of Reach yet. But that is very much a book that brings up a heavy topic and then just swipes it under the rug as necessary. And I feel that it exi that, whole, that whole thing requires a lot more examination than it's given. So... But overall, it's solid. It's a decent read. If you want something, if you want some backstory set before the events of the Halo video games, you cannot be bad with starting here. This or Contact Harvest. Those are the two books to read before playing the games. So, yeah. I think it's worth your time. I'm going to give you spoilers now if you don't want that. Time to bail. Um, so... Guess what? Are you fans of the Halo TV show? Said no one ever, but do you like the Halo TV show? Well, guess what? In this novel, one of the first things we learned is that Madrigal got glassed. Madrigal's uh, also a planet they use on, or a colony they use on, on the Halo TV show, so I thought I'd mention that. You know, we, we start the book by getting to learn about Delgado and Melko, who are both uh, insurrectionists. We then meet Adriana, who's Spartan 111. We get to see Jacob Keyes and his daughter Miranda. Miranda will be another important character down the line. So, the Cole Protocol. This is, is... The timeline of this book is kind of confusing. I don't know if a lot of months pass in between the story, because there are clearly stuff that exists before this. Like, Halo Wars happens before this, and they talk about the Cold Protocol. So I'm not... Maybe the Cold Protocol section of this book is earlier in the timeline, and then the later parts of this book are later. I'm not exactly sure, but the timeline could be a little funky there. And this is a little thing, but speaks to Key's character. He flies with this dude named Jeffrey once on his way to go to a debriefing. And in that time, you know, they ask him to go on this mission. He says, yes, but can I have Jeffrey as a pilot? Because in that short time, that short ride over to wherever he needed to go, he could see how great of a pilot Jeffrey was, saw that potential, and wanted him a part of the mission. That's crazy. Speaks wonderfully about his character. You know, we get a lot of nuance with the insurrectionists in terms of not just being villains, but being actual people with wants and desires. And the rubble, which again, I think is another thing that the TV show used, because I think Soren in the TV show lives on the rubble, at least in season one. Um, but this is just a, a colony out there. We also, again, get to see ODST uh, Hell Jumpers. So that was cool. Or this might be the first time. We also get another Spartan, J206. The thing that was nice about Little's backstory here is that J as a child, kept trying to escape training. He was also an orphan, because he was a Spartan three. Um, or he was just, I'm not sure if they're Spartan threes, but he was an orphan. Um, but 
it was just a really nice section of him and Adriana trying to escape the compound multiple times and actually help them build a bond together and help prove to um, to the UNSC that they, they would make good Spartans, that they should stick around. Juliana is an insurrectionist AI and she's going rampant. We get to learn about Thel as a person and his Sanghele culture, which we'll get more in other books, and we've had some in other books as well, but we get an Oni officer as well in here. His name is uh, Watanabe. There's a lot of nuance there too, because Oni is like this shady organization within the UNSC, but even he still has humanity. Uh, Bonifacio is one of the uh, um, council, council members of the insurrectionists on the rubble, and he's being a rat for the Covenant. Watanabe dies. And Keyes kills a man for the first time. Because apparently Keyes, before this, you know, he's shot at people a lot. He's um, definitely killed people in, like, ships and stuff. But as for man-to-man, eye-to-eye, point-blank shooting, he hasn't done that. So that was a first for him. It's also interesting with the St. Keely that drawing blood makes you lose honor. Which is an interesting thing for this. Because I know, like, if you look at, like, Mass Effect with the Krogan or you know, the, the Klingon from Star Trek, having blood on you would probably, like, you know, if you fought a good fight and you had a lot of blood on you, that would be honorable, you know, like, you would, you'd be respected for that. But in saying Healy culture, who also highly values honor, they see it as, no, to be honorable, you know, you get into a fight and you don't even have a scratch on you, that's how good you are. So to, to have any sort of blood on you is to dishonor yourself. We also learned some blasphemy for humans who use covenant weapons. Oop. I do that a lot in Halo, so. Oop. Reth is a kid Yar claims that Truth sent him to, to destabilize um, these insurrectionists because that's exactly, you know, the UNSC is always right. They, they, they just want the information to Earth and then they'll kill the people on, on the rubble. But, you know, as unnuanced as that is, the more interesting part of this is that Regret sent Thel and his group to do stuff. And the Kigyar is doing something completely separate for truth. Because in between all of this huge war going on, truth and regret are having their own political, religious, internal battle without ever explicitly saying so to one another. And then, you know, so that's what's fascinating. We barely get anything with the prophets and i'm like why give me a political novel on high charity please i beg of you give me truth going through his machinations to rise to power please i beg of you if it doesn't exist already i need it but because we get little slivers of it and it's always great i hate his portrayal in three i'll say that right now his portrayal in three is poopy garbage cans halo 2 truth is based is all hell um but, you know, so the Kid Yar attack the rubble, so does Thel, everyone fights, da 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 and, you know, everything's safe by the end, you know. Some people die, nobody important, and, you know, the insurrectionists are given safe haven, um, Delgado joins the navy, and Keyes gets to see his daughter. So, you know, overall, happy ending, you know, the... The Covenant, I mean, are still attacking everyone, they're still in a major war, but they did not get the uh, information to Earth yet. They will, but not yet. So that that's basically it. Like I said, overall, the novel was fine, it was decent, not the greatest thing in the world. Um, I like it, but, you know, maybe I've just been spoiled with the, with the Star Wars Expanded Universe and other novels that I've read that you know aren't Star Wars. Like, it's not a bad book. But it's nothing phenomenal either. It's perfectly decent. Um, but yeah. I mean, who am I to talk, right? I do all these reviews on YouTube. I don't even write. I don't write things. So who am I to talk? I'm just saying, like, it's very simple. All the characters are written well. All the characters are enjoyable to read. But it's just, like, not... I don't know. It doesn't have, it doesn't have the oomph that I'm looking for. I don't, I don't even know what that means. Like, it's, that's just a feeling within me. Right, and that's all subjective. Somebody might find this book and be like, this is the greatest thing since 
you know, the second coming of Christ. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, for me, it was fine. It was, it was a good book, but nothing, like, that would make me scream, like, oh my god, you gotta read this. But if you're into Halo and you want some backstory, I would recommend it. So, this is pretty much it, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you next time when we finish the fight. Bye-bye.